there are many implementation challenges this is a multi year process uh, we of course have to be able to put a robust proposal together a proposal that takes into account many of the issues mm. uh, that are swirling around in the climate uh, debate and the climate discussion right now the european union of course has implemented uh, the carbon border adjustment mechanism cbam as it's called so the design of the global climate alliance has to take into account the cbam uh we have to take into account competitive uh issues so that uh if subsidies uh, are available for steel companies in one country uh, they don't make it difficult for steel companies in another country so we've got to align policies and we've got to make sure that all uh companies are on a level playing field in that regard there's a third set of implementation challenges which really deal with uh the green taxonomy and regulation uh, that goes along with that so we have to make sure that the regulatory framework associated with green investments uh, and disclosure thereof uh, is consistent across jurisdictions so whether it's the european union the us the uk india uh, china we all have to have consistent terminology for green investments so we all know that it's uh, it's a legitimate green investment so regulation disclosure compliance all of those issues become very very important and then finally we have to mobilize the capital so we have to be able to engage with commercial capital with private sector investors and make sure that you know whether it's a sovereign uh, wealth fund whether it is a pension fund large mutual funds all of them uh, do believe that it is in their best economic and fiduciary interest to make these green investments all of these stakeholders have to be taken on board the policy discussions uh, have to result in concrete outcomes uh, political leadership uh, and voters have to feel that this is all in their best interest and so as i said this is a multi year process uh, that will take time to bring on board all the stakeholders but i have a lot of optimism about it uh, karen because i have seen over the last many years how the eu with 27 member countries has been able to uh, forge the eu fit for 55 program which is very ambitious uh, very wide ranging and is showing real results uh, in moving towards net zero so the eu is a trend setter the eu has shown us how to do it and we need to build on that and bring on board uh, both global north and global south mm-hmm. members and that's why uh, these last two days in brussels uh, meeting with european colleagues discussing with eu officials has been so useful because there are many many very interesting learnings to be had from uh, the eu fit for 55 program and the discussions and deliberations uh, across the eu and making this happen as you mentioned there are many talks happening each and every day and you are policy maker or politician so you know how much you need to talk every day therefore i'm asking like there have been already so many efforts which may be felt and are not ambitious enough and that's like rio kyoto and what makes this you believe that this can success why you go for it there have been many climate agreements karen you are yeah. absolutely right there's been rio kyoto paris Uh, and unfortunately um we have continued to increase carbon emissions the work the world continues to warm at a, a very accelerated rate there are three reasons why i think uh, this is going to be different and i hope it's going to be different first the hour is late mm-hmm. it's time that we do something really dramatic and radical uh, for uh, the global uh, climate uh, we've got to work together Uh, we cannot be in a situation where we end up with two and a half, three degrees centigrade global warming because that would be catastrophic. So the hour is late. We have to act. We have to act now. That's the first reason. The second reason is that uh, voters, the public uh, across many many countries, certainly uh, in Europe, certainly in the US, uh, in the UK, in Japan. and increasingly in the global south in india as well you know when i go and i uh, do talks with young people i hear back from them their concerns mm. about what's happening to the weather what's happening to climate the droughts the floods that they are seeing so i think that the support that we're getting from the public across the world to take decisive action on climate change uh, is is really what's pushing us uh, to act and then the third reason i think is that uh, senior political leaders uh, you know the honorable prime minister shri narendra modi ji uh, the bundeskanzler uh, olaf scholz uh, president biden 
senior political leaders around the world uh, do believe that it is the time to act now and so this combination of factors i think is is unprecedented uh, climate change is uh, something that we are dealing with every day the public wants to move forward as quickly as possible and political leaders also see that it is uh, in their own uh, interest in their country's national interest to move forward so i'm very optimistic that uh, for the sake of our children our grandchildren and for our sake as well uh, we will have very tangible and material action uh, on uh, decarbonization now